what I'm going to do is we're going to do the female pelvis first. There, Jerrion. Another one's joining here. Okay, good, Alyssa. All right, thanks for joining in, guys. So if we go ahead to our pelvis protocol underneath the hospital here, you're going to see that there is a female pelvis uterus. That's the protocol that we want to pull over. Okay, so our first survey, what we're going to make sure is we have the Corsal XL coil, and we're going to turn on all the elements. We're going to proceed and start. And this is our three plane pilot here. We can do a reference, proceed and start. In the very first series that we are going to set up for is a T2 sagittal of the uterus here, okay? Now, notice that there is a coronal T2 respiratory trigger of the abdomen, and then there's also an axial T2 respiratory trigger of the abdomen here. Sometimes um, our protocols might kind of do more of a larger field of view of the entire lower pelvis area and then do dedicated images of the uterus. We're going to start with the T2 sagittal. I'm going to go ahead. Yes, Shalika. Before you get there, what was the protocol you pulled over? It was female pelvis. Female pelvis. It said Owen's female pelvis. But when you went to the, um, the oh. hospital lab, what yeah. was it that you grabbed over? Female pelvis uterus. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, you're welcome. So I'm going to double click the sagittal T2 and I'm asking you to tell me what kind of matrix, voxel size, the slice thickness is we'll use four at point four. So I can go ahead to my geometry and I can go to a slice thickness of four. We can go to default, which would be point four. Okay. So if I look at my sagittal, now these are just quick localizers, so we're not going to be getting like beautiful pictures of the uterus yet, but I can tell that the uterus is going to be in this area here. So therefore my field of view box, I can make this smaller. I have a 240 by 240, but if I would go to, let's say, a 200, I, and I'm going to bring this down so I get a little bit more of those pelvic floor muscles. I'm starting out. I have the sacrum and the coccyx here. So that definitely is a nice field of view to use. So I have a 200 by 200 here. Slice, slice thickness of four at point four. My voxel size, I have a one voxel size. Um, if you have a good coil that has a lot of channels to it, we can probably bring it down to 0 0.8 to get some better resolution in our images. My slice coverage, if I look at my coronal, I'm going to kind of just page through my coronal images here and I can see where my femoral heads are located. So if I would do acetabulum to acetabulum, I can probably take some slices off. I'm going to go to like a 35 and try even to a 31 here. So the reason I like to use an odd number is so my center slice will be at the very center of the anatomy. So 31 slices, I'm starting in the acetabulum on the left side. I'm ending in the acetabulum on the right side. Pretty much I should in get all of my structures from this true pelvis. I can look at my axial image here. And notice, I just want to make sure 
that the patient's laying in there nice and straight. So I can get a nice sagittal going straight through. I have a rest slab that I have turned on. And many times, because there is some motion possibly from breathing, I will use an anterior rest slab and put it either straight up and down, or sometimes I've even angled it and brought it in within my field of view because I'm truly, um, on this particular case, looking at my uterus here. So any kind of bowel motion that is going to be maybe occurring, I'm hoping to alleviate that with this rest slab. Now, I'm doing a sagittal and so can somebody tell me what two directions of phase I have to pick from? Brad, what two directions? Good, and what do you think you would pick? Good job, yes. Because anything that's gonna be up here, I don't really wanna to have to worry about that coming down into my um, image here. And the only thing that I really have anterior and posterior is I have some fat here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pick an A to P. So I am going to have to turn on fold over. And one thing I'd like to mention here is on this particular software, you either turn on fold over on or off. But in the real world, when I turn on fold over, I can go by percentage. I can say I only need a 20% in the anterior region and maybe a 20% in the posterior. So we can tell the computer with the new version of software out there percentage wise. And that's nice because it doesn't necessarily, um, it helps with your time. Instead of having to do like a hundred fold over, if I only need to do 20 fold over, then I'm gonna go ahead and be able to scan faster, okay? But on this particular software, I can only turn it on or off. So I am gonna turn on fold over. So anything from anterior to posterior is not gonna wrap into my image. And Brad, you might wanna turn off your voice now. We can just hear some in the background. Thank you. Okay, so I like how my geometry is set up. I like my field of view. I like my slice number of slices. I like where the direction that my phase is going, A to P. It's two minutes and 40 seconds. So if I wanted to add more signal to my pictures, I can go to motion and say, you know what? I am gonna go up in my neck. And I can go to three, it's gonna get me more signal and it's only four minutes. I like that. Let's go to my weighting. My weighting is TR of 3,201. My TE is 90. My TFD factor is 20. If you feel like you wanted to kind of move it up a little bit to around a 23, that would be fine. So we have good T2 weighting. If let's say the radiologist says, I want to add more T2 weighting, then you could up your TE to 100, okay? Otherwise, I like how this looks. Four minutes is not long at all. I'm gonna go ahead and click proceed and start. My next number four is to set up for a T2 axial. 
of the uterus, and that's going to be down here. And axial T2 of the uterus. I'm telling you to pull up series number four for my sagittal reference. So here's my sagittal. I'm going to go to series number four. And here is my sagittal reference of my uterus. Now notice, I'm going to turn my slices off. Notice that on this particular patient, the uterus is here. And these abnormal structures here are fibroids. Okay? So there's actually fibroids kind of almost on the within the part of the vagina, within the cervix here, and I don't have a real good delineation of my junctional zone off of the sagittal. Okay, I can kind of page through. I see a little bit of a bright line there. But I can definitely tell where my uterus is at. Okay? So what I'm going to do is a long axis image of the uterus. So I'm going to go ahead, first of all, I'm going to pick my geometry. I'm going to do a field of view. We did about a 200 or a 20 on my sagittals. That actually is pretty good of my axials because this is an axial so here would be my field of view I'll turn my slices back on so if you like that 200 by 200 you can utilize that I'm going to use a four millimeter at a default gap again Okay, I got that set. Now I need to angle with the long axis of my uterus. So I'm going to angle like this. Do you understand? I want to be parallel with this long axis of the uterus. Does that make sense to you guys? So once I have this angle, now I can kind of page through and see how much coverage I want to cover. But you can't see it. Yes, but you can't see it. If I go a little bit closer here, does that help? Or let me bring this back and I'll just take my camera here. Does that help if I do that? I have 35 slices, so I'm gonna actually just drop it down to 30. Because if I page through, I am definitely covering all of my uterus. And I'm getting a little bit of abnormal signal through here. So there's probably maybe some ovarian cysts in here. And I'm just going to make sure I cover all of that as well. And if I go back to my center slice, I am, my last slice is way back here. I am definitely past all of the rectum. So I actually will have great coverage from the first slice to the last slice of the entire uterus. If I look at my coronal, I am from the 
iliac crest all the way through past, this would be where your pubic symphysis would be. I'm like all the way through my pelvic region. So I'm all the way through this true pelvis. Does that make sense to you guys? Turn this camera back here. Does that help when I try to bring that camera close to you? Good, okay. So I like how my angle is positioned. Now, because of the angle that I used here, and I know this is an axial, technically an axial oblique or oblique of the uterus, if I go down to my slice orientation, orientation, it changed it to coronal because of the degree of my angle is angle. But I still know that this is an axial oblique, okay? So now I'm gonna to go to my phase direction and I have two directions of phase. I can pick right to left or I can pick foot to head. Which do you think would be the better choice in picking your phase direction. Good job, right to left. Will I need fold over? Yes. Do I have it turned on? Yes. Again, this is a T2 weighted. So now I'm gonna go to my contrast tab. I have 3,000 TR, I have a 90 TE, I have a 20 turbo factor. Now notice my range here is only from 3,000 to 4,000. Um, you could try to up your range to like that 8,000, see if it changes anything. You're still at two packages, okay? So it didn't really do much, but I was just wondering if it would drop it to one package and it didn't. My TE is at 90, it's gonna give me T2 weighting. If you felt like you needed more T2 weighting, up your TE. My PSE factor is at 20. You feel like you, you wanna go up a little bit, so let's say a 23. It's only a minute and 57 seconds, so if I go to my NSA, I can up my NSA to three. It's gonna give me more signal. Even if you felt like you have a good patient in there, I can go to four. It's still under four minutes. Doesn't look too bad. I can go back to my geometry because I'm gonna look at my voxel size here. My voxel size is at one. If you felt like you have a great coil that's gonna give you that signal you need, you can even try to bring your resolution up a little bit. It's gonna cost you some time. So therefore, Gonna be closer to five minutes so I could then totally come back down here and go back to three NSA. Again this is as a MRI technologist these are the things that you're going to be doing. You're going to be looking at geometry, you're going to be looking at your resolution, your field of view, your phase direction, do you need fold over? Okay. If by chance you say, you know what, I don't want to bring my NSA down to three, I'm going to leave it at four. Well, remember you have a sense coil. So turn on your sense. Now you can go ahead and up your P reduction factor. Okay? So by bringing a P reduction factor of 1.3, it saves me some time. I'm back now to three minutes and 41 seconds. So again, those are things that you can play with. How you scan it is going to be your job as an MRI technologist to pick because you might scan something one way and another technologist might scan it another way and they will both get you good diagnostic images. What I try to teach you with manipulation of parameters 
is you can play with these parameters and get either more signal or more resolution out of your coil by adjusting these things. And your coil, how many channels your coil has is going to be dependent on how you can change some of these parameters to get you the pictures that you want. Okay, but again, I'm giving you the tools to play. And then you can scan something and if you like how that turned out, then you can save that into your protocol for the next time you do this MRI of the uterus. Okay, so I like how this looks. I'm gonna go ahead and proceed and start. Number five is going to be a coronal T2. So the coronal T2, I'm now gonna be perpendicular to the long axis. I liked my field of view of 200, so I'm gonna put that back in. And if I look at this field of view here, I'm gonna put the center of my field of view box right into the center of where your uterus should be. I'm gonna pull up a better axial, which was number three. So I'm gonna page through here. Right here, I'm gonna turn these slices off so you can see, but I'm gonna blow this up here. On this particular image, you can see a little bit of the bright signal, the hyper intense, that is your endometrium. You can see a little bit of a dark black, a little bit, not as, not as much as what some of the other uterus MRIs demonstrate. And then you can see there's a thickened or a wider area of the myometrium here. Okay, and notice there's an ovarian cyst here and there's probably some ovarian cysts up here as well. Okay. Turn this back. So I'm gonna go ahead again and I'm gonna do a four millimeter at default. I'm going to now be perpendicular. So I'm gonna go 90 degrees to what I just took in step number four. And I can probably take some slices off because what I want to cover here is if my first slice is in the pubic bone and my last slice is all the way through where the rectum and the sigmoid colon's at, I'm, into my, I'm ending in the sacrum, I will have covered all of the anatomy that I need to cover. Okay, and I'll turn my slices back on. So this is how I would set up for a T2 coronal short axis. Again, it's T2 because those T2 weighting is what really highlights the pathology best. Um, before I go to my contrast page, I'm gonna think about my phase direction. And in this particular phase direction, I can go right to left or A to P, and I think I'm gonna pick A to P here. I'm gonna take this rest lab and I'm gonna go ahead and position it in this anterior region here. I'm gonna not get too close to my uterus here because then I'm gonna go ahead and block these ovarian cysts that's showing up. So I'm just gonna move it out here so I can suppress any kind of belly motion of my patient. Do I need fold over? I'm gonna need fold over on. It is turned on because I'm gonna have wrap, right? There's a little bit of even some fat 
in the glute back here. So T2 weight in, I can now go to my contrast. I think we were using TSE factors in that low 20. I have a 4,099TR, I have a TE of 90. That's going to give me T2 weighting. It's 2 minutes and 27 seconds. Again, I could move my NFA up. Even if I wanted to move it to 4 and I don't like 5 minutes, I can come back and say, oh yeah, I'm going to use my sense coil. I'm going to use parallel imaging here. I'm going to go to 1.3. And you can go to 1.4, it drops it down to 3 minutes and 49 seconds. So that looks good. We can hit proceed and start. So now I have a sagittal and axial. I can replace this coronal. which is series five. So now I have a better coronal here. Notice I'm starting to get into where these fibroids are. Here's my actual uterus. Okay. So the very next step is to set up for my contrast set of pictures. I'm going to do a free M. Dipson and then I'm going to inject and I'm going to go ahead and do a 30 second and then a one minute. Now these can also go to three minute and five minute, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and do my free M. Dipson and notice that if I look at my contrast here, this is a 3D volume, okay? And what's nice when we do these 3D volumes is I can go ahead and set this up and I can angle it with the long axis if I want, or I can do these straight because with a 3D volume, I can post-process these. So I can post-process coronal obliques and axial obliques, okay? So we'll just scan this straight. I'm going to make it easy on you. I'm going to bring my field of view down to this 200. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and position my field of view box right in the center. Notice that my fold over direction is A to P. So with A to P, I'm going to have a little bit of fold over. So if I turn on my fold over suppression, look what it does to my time. It's going to force me to go from a 10 second scan to almost a 30 second scan. So if I turn that back off, it drops it down to 10 seconds. So what I can do is anterior and posterior, I'm going to bring my field of view up a little bit. I'm going to go to 230, leave it at 200 right to left. But if I go to a 230, there's a good chance, or even maybe a 250, there's a good chance that then I don't have to worry about wrap occurring in that A to P direction. And now it's still only 12 seconds long. So that's why, again, you have to look at what foldover does to your time, okay? Because if I turn it on, it's going to increase this breath hold because I'm going to have them hold their breath. If I look back in my protocol, notice I have this nice little icon that says this is a breath hold, okay? I'm going to bring this back here. And going back to our abdominal series, notice how all of these in this box are going to be set up identically the same. So I like 
the field of view that I have picked. I don't think I'm going to have any fold over A to P because I opened up my field of view only in the A to P direction. It's 12 seconds. Notice that this TR and TE are 5.6 and 1.8. And why is it so low? Oh, that's because it's a field echo or a gradient echo. And is this going to give me T1 or T2 waiting? Well, if I'm giving contrast, I want it to be a T1. And if I go to my flip angle, let me bring this up here, closer here. My flip angle is at 15. And remember that if I want a T1 weighted, I have to bring this flip angle to, let's go ahead and maybe bring it up to around a 70. A 70 degree flip. If I left it at 15, it would give me a T2 weighted gradient echo, but I want it to be a T1 gradient echo, right? So I'm gonna change that flip angle to around that 70, you can even do 75, okay? Bring this back. 13 seconds now, because I adjusted that flip a little bit. I'm going to click proceed, and I'm ready to start, but I'm going to have my patient hold their breath. So I'm going to say, Cindy, right, you do not have to touch the TR and the TE. All you'll have to adjust is the flip angle because if you go back to physics, remember with the gradient echo, it's the flip angle that's going to give you the weighting. So I'm going to say, Cindy, this next set, I'm just going to have you hold your breath for about 13 seconds. And I can just have her hold her breath. I don't have to worry about expiration or even inspiration because I'm down in the pelvis. I don't have to worry about that diaphragm pushing that liver or pancreas up or down, right? So I'm just going to say, I just need you to hold your breath. Start it. You can breathe. And then I'll say, okay, Cindy, I'm going to go ahead and give you an injection here in a bit. And then within 30 seconds, I'm going to have you hold your breath again. So if I click on the 30 second picture here, I'm not going to have you set this all up again because in the real world, it's going to take exactly what you had set up prior to it. So I'm just going to click on it, click proceed. We're going to start it. I'll have my phone here and within 30 seconds, you can say, Cindy, I'm going to have you hold your breath again. Start it. You can breathe. I'm going to go ahead and click the one minute. I'm going to click proceed and say, okay, Cindy, I'm going to do one more picture here. I'm going to have you hold your breath for another 13 seconds. And at that one minute mark, I'll say, okay, Cindy, I just need you to hold your breath and start. Okay, Cindy, you can breathe. And that is the protocol that I'm going to have you perform for this practical. Now, in the real world, you might do a three minute and you might do a five minute, and you might even do a delayed picture 10 minutes after injection possibly, okay? But what I'm asking you now to do for this practical is to show me anatomy. So we're gonna go to the viewing. I want you to show me where is the uterus. So if you can see the uterus in an axial, perfect. Say right here is the uterus. Okay, I'm gonna to try to pull these up closer for you. Okay, here is the uterus. Where's the bladder at? Okay, well I'm gonna to have to probably page down here. I'm gonna window this a little bit. Okay, where is my bladder? Okay, well here is the uterus here. The bladder is going to be up in this area here. 
Where's the rectum? Well, I know the rectum is going to be very posterior, right? So that's part of your rectum. Where's that endometrium? And again, this doesn't, whoops, this doesn't have a great endometrium, but if I go to my uterus, you can see there is a hyper intense line and that's where your endometrium is at. So the vagina is probably going to be easiest to pick out on the sagittal. And if you want to pick out everything on these sagittals, you can. Because I know on the sagittal and this mid-sagittal, both of these here, this is my bladder. You can see that here. I'm trying to maybe darken it for you. So there's my bladder. This would be where my uterus is at and it does have some fibroids here. If I look at this particular image over here, you can see that there's kind of like a white line through here. That would be where that endometrium is at. Um, as far as the vagina, if I pat page through here, I can follow. There's some fibroids and right through here would be where your vagina is located. The symphysis pubic, well, you can just tell me that this is the pubic bone. The cervix, the cervix is a little hard on this particular case because it is an abnormal case. But what I do want you to say is it's right probably through here because it's the opening. Can you move your camera back? Back there, there we go. So if you would want to say that I know the cervix is the opening to the uterus, so it's probably in this area because I can see part of the endometrium here. So it's about in this area here. And then ovaries are going to be best seen in the coronal plane. And if I page through here, this would be one right over here. And you have some ovaries right over here as well. Okay. Does that make sense to you guys? Are you guys struggling with anatomy on any of these? Okay, so bring your book with you when you are setting these up. Look at your book, look at the anatomy on these pictures, and then try to go ahead and, you know, pick out anatomy. Um, this way on your image IDs that you're going to be taking next week, you are very familiar with the layers of the uterus, the um, cervix, the vagina, the bladder, the rectum, the anus. Um, you know, when we talk about the anus, I'm going to go here. The anus is not going to be internal. The anus is probably down here. It's the very base of the, it's the opening into the rectum. So this would be part of the rectum here. So the anus is down here. It's not internal, okay? Okay, so that is how we're going to perform a female pelvis. Let's switch gears here to the male pelvis. I'm going to go ahead and pull up an Owens male pelvis. Which is here. Proceed. I'm going to pull over my prostate protocol. going to go ahead and just do that free plane survey. Just going to make sure that I have the right coil selected. It's going to be my XL, torso XL.
Little stairs, I'm trying to find it real quick here. There it is. And I'm gonna make sure all of my coils are turned on. Let's see and start. Here is my three plane of the fee or of the male pelvis. So do my calibration scan. And the very first thing I'm asking you to do is to set up a T2 axial through the entire pelvis. Okay? So I'm gonna scroll down here and delete it looks like it copied a bunch of here we're going to get rid of these here okay so i'm going to do an axial t2 whole pelvis here so when i say whole pelvis we're going to include from the iliac crest all the way through to the anus Okay, and my field of view coverage then will use an eight millimeter at a 0.8. So we'll go eight at default. I can adjust my field of view here, right to left. Go 300. A to C, I can probably bring my A to C in a little bit, 280 here. Not sure, let's say I'm not sure exactly, maybe there's some prostate cancer, but I want to look at um, structures within the false pelvis up here. Again, the true pelvis is going to be this internal, and then I have within the wings of my ilium here. So the entire or the entire pelvis will be from the iliac crest all the way through and if I look at my sagittal here I'm down through the very anus here here's my rectum I'm down to past almost those pelvic floor muscles okay t2 weighting so I like my geometry here if i take my phase and change it to a to p what i can do is turn off fold over because i do not need any fold over there's nothing that's going to wrap with this field of view i have it two minutes and 48 seconds i have a te of 100 i have a tr of 3000 I have a TS factor of 18. I can even probably bring that up on that 23. It's only two minutes. I can go to my motion and I can up that to three or four. If I go to four and it's four minutes and I don't like that time, I can turn on sense. And I can go to a P reduction of like a 1.2 or a 1.3, three and a half minutes. That'll give me good T2 weighting. Proceed and start. I'm going to pull up a better axial now. I just did all of these axial slices. So I'm going to pull up a nice axial here. Notice I can see my bladder underneath my bladder. I can start to, this is where the prostate's located. Okay, so now I'm going to do a T2 sagittal of the prostate. Here we're going to go to 4 millimeter thickness at default, just like we did for the female. My coverage of slices, whoops, turn my back, but my coverage of slices, I'm from acetabulum to acetabulum here. I should get all of my prostate, I should get all of the seminal vesicles on. If I go over to my field of view here, I know this is my bladder. I know the prostate lies just under the bladder here, and I'm going to put my field of view right in the center. 
I have an 180 by 180. That looks good if you want to try to keep it simple and do a 200 by 200 because that's what we used on our female pelvis. That's okay too. That's still a nice field of view, uh, field of view to use. I have 24 slices, but I like to use an odd number because I like to have a center slice going right through the center. So I can go to a 23, or if you feel like that was too tight from acetabulum to acetabulum, go to a 25. I'm gonna go ahead and pick my phase to go A to P because in a sagittal plane, I have A to P or I have head to foot. I don't want head to foot. If I go A to P, I have a little bit of wrap. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep my fold over suppression on. Now, if you wanted to, you can turn on a rest lab and put a little bit of a rest lab like we did for the female pelvis. That would be okay. Four minutes, four minutes is a good time. Let me go to, is it, how does my weighting look? I have a 25 PSE, I have 120, I have a very high PE, it's gonna give me good P2 weighting. I have a 3857. TR, that looks good. You can click proceed and start. Now I'm gonna replace this sagittal with a better sagittal of the prostate, which would be series six. And right here in that center slice is here. I have my bladder, and I'm gonna to try to blow this up for you here. Try to window it so you guys can see better. Oops. Okay. Let me bring it back a little bit. So here's my bladder. I can almost see a line right through the center. This is my urethra. And I know then around both sides of the urethra is my prostate gland. Back here is part of my seminal vesicles. Here's my rectum. Okay, I can see that the penis is located here. And what do they call the spongy material? You can call that that corpus cavernosum. If you even write the spongiosum, I would be okay with that as well. Okay. So I have a good sagittal. I have a good axial. I'm gonna set up now for a T2 axial of the prostate. An axial is going to be perpendicular to the long axis. So I'm gonna angle it in this direction here, I'm going to use a four at a default. Four at default. I'm going to get a field of view box. We have a 180 by 180. That would be fine to use. Or if you feel like you want to make it easy and do that 20 to 20. 200 by 200, that's fine too. So I'm going to be perpendicular to the long axis. I know that my prostate is going to be longer in this direction, so I'm going to be perpendicular to it. I can add some slices to get all of my bladder. You really wouldn't have to. But what I'm worried about is I want to make sure that I catch all of the seminal vesicles that lie posterior to the bladder here, okay? I'm all the way through my anus. I have most of the penis on, but this particular, the prostate, this is the area I'm looking at. Okay, and I'm in the center over here if I look at my chromos. I just want to make sure I got my slices in the very center. Okay, T2 weighted. First of all, I should go to my phase. My phase is going to be A to P. Okay. 
I'm going to pick A to P. Do I need fold over? Yeah, I'm going to need some fold over because there's probably a little bit wrapping in. C2 weighted, 4,154, 120TE. I have a 25 turbo factor, 4 minutes and 34 seconds at 4 neck. That looks straight. Do you feel like your patient can't hold still in there hardly anymore? You can put on sense and you can say, you know what, I'm going to make it a little bit quicker and go to 1.2. It's now 3 minutes and 44 seconds. Proceed and start. For the T2 coronal of the prostate, I'm going to do again 4 at default. I'm going to angle. Well, first of all, let's do my field of view. It's at 180 by 180, but if you want to go to that 200 again, I'm going to put the center of my field of view, the center where my prostate's at, which is right here. I'm going to now be parallel with the long axis of the prostate, so it's going to be in this direction. The coverage that you're going to use, well, I'm starting back here. I'm in the rectum, okay? Here's part of the sacrum back here. Kind of see a part of it there. But I'm way from the, way back in the rectum, so I'm gonna get all of the seminal vesicles and I'm all the way anterior to the pubic bone. So you will catch the entire prostate here. T2, first of all, I guess I can do a field of, or I can do phase of right to left or A to P. Well, I don't want any of the upper abdominal flow to come down, so I want my flow to go right to left. It is right to left, but I am going to need fold over, so I better turn fold over on. T2 waiting, I have... A TSC of 10, but I can up that to 23. How many slices? I have 24 slices. So if I go to a 23 TSC, 120 TE, and a TR is 32.95, I'm good T2 waiting. Three minutes and 50 seconds, I have four neck. I can go back here. I can go ahead and chain turn on my sense. I can make it a little quicker. It's three minutes and 11 seconds. And if I know that, you know what, I have, an, I have a brand new coil, I can bring my voxels down even to 0 0.8, give it a little bit more resolution. I've got plenty of signal. It's only four minutes, you can do that as well. Again, this is where you play. You go back and forth with signal and resolution. Okay? Four minutes, you can click proceed and start. And you've now done T2 weighted imaging of the entire pelvis and dedicated T2 sagittals, T2 axials, T2 coronals of the um, prostate. I'm not having to do the um, Dixon here because we've already practiced that on a female, but if you did, you would sense pretty much set it up the exact same way. You're just covering male anatomy versus female anatomy, okay? Only thing I didn't tell you to set up for this prostate is a diffusion. Do you, you won't have to set that up for your practical, but if you had to in real life, well then I would just go to my Phillips protocol. I can go to my pelvis, I can go to my prostate, and look at, they have a diffusion right here for you. You can pull that over, and now you can just set up a diffusion in the axial plane. That would be easy to set up. It actually has the volume box on there for you and you can set it up through your prostate. The only thing that you'd have to look at is the B values and the radiologist 
well if you're setting up a prostate protocol we'll help you with the b values because you'll probably be doing b values 600 maybe a thousand sometimes even a 1400 b value that will again be dependent on the coil that you have at your disposal of how high of a b value you can pick okay but again you don't have to set this up for the protocol or for the practical i'm just showing you that when you have these built practicals or these built protocols if there's ever an additional set that you need to add in it's no big deal go ahead and just find it anywhere in your library and drag it on over and set it up okay so let's quickly go through anatomy I know some of you have to go here, so I'm going to go to my pelvis, to the um, viewer here. I'm going to load my case in. Need you to pull out the prostate gland. Well, if you can see it easier on a coronal, pull up the coronal. Okay. What's nice is it's easy to pick out the bladder, and I know the prostate gland is right below it. So if you look. At this particular image, I'm going to try to darken it up for you so you can see it better on your... Notice how you have this little bit of a, it looks like a heart here, right? That is your prostate right below the bladder. I'll pull it back here. The prosthetic urethra is best seen on a sagittal. And it's right the mid sagittal slice so right over here you can almost see a urethra coming off of the bladder coming straight down the seminal vesicles are located behind that bladder so it's located here you can almost see them better <clears throat> in the axial plane and as i page through here when you see these structures right through here behind the bladder, these are your seminal vesicles. We know where the rectum's at. The rectum's pretty easy to find. The testes, <clears throat> you're going to have to probably pull up a coronal and take it and unmagnify it. And as we scroll down, you can see the testes on either side here. As I'm looking at these testes, look at the one on the left side. And it's hard to tell on here. I'm going to try to see if I can blow this up for you. But you can almost see the spermatic cord that comes down right through here. Okay. I know right through here would be where my corpus cavernosum's at. Over here would be my symphysis pubic bone. Let me bring this back. Here is my pubic symphysis. Oops. There it is right there. Below that is going to be where your corpus cavernosum is. Okay. And you can even, if you feel like you can pick them up better off of the axials, you can zoom out of these axials here. And again, you can see the actual, let me scroll down here. We get the load to go. We're starting to, where the, the penis is at, we're starting to get into these axials of the testes here. Looking at the sagittal, you can see that here is the penis. Actually, I was going to point out this black line here that kind of goes up and it's going to go to the back is that part of the vas deferens that goes to the back of where the seminal vesicles are. 
And if you look closely on this other one, and it'll probably be easier to see once you're in class, you can actually see from the seminal vesicles is your eject, um, ejaculatory duct that comes off of the seminal vesicles here. So again, it's just looking at anatomy. And the anatomy book is here. Pull out the anatomy book. <clears throat> Many of these MRI images match pretty darn closely to the images in the book. And that'll help you in identifying anatomy. Okay? Any questions? What do you guys think? 